Good morning, family. Good morning, This is, it seems to be a hallelujah day. Amen. Wow. I'm, a, I'm getting to, to an age where it looks as if I need glasses. <laughs> but I won't say that out loud. <laughs> family, this morning we are, are getting into an interesting piece in uh, the book of Revelation. And... Uh, uh, we're going to start this morning with Revelation chapter 20, part 1, and then we're going to break it up again. We're going to finish with part 2 uh, tonight for, for those who want to join us at uh, 6.30. Um, so if you have your Bibles with you, you can go to the book of Revelation. It's, it's slightly after the book of Exodus. Um, you'll find it there. And then we are, for uh, just to, to uh, save some time... Uh, Brother Brian, can we have the uh, can we have the the thingy magic going? Thank you. <laughs> uh, to save time, I'm not going to read through the piece. We're going to go through it uh, uh, scripture by scripture, verse by verse. And so this morning, family, this is what we are going to be concentrating on. In the beginning, is um, Satan that is going to be bound for. 1,000 years, is there a hallelujah? Yes. Amen. Um, from the very beginning of time, this fallen angel has been causing an excessive amount of problems with us. For us, to us, in us, through us, whatever we want to call it. And here we are going to see in the Word of God the, the absolute... Um, eternal word of God that there's going to come a time here on earth we're not talking about the new Jerusalem and, and in heaven here on earth where he is going to be bound for 1,000 years amen amen be, before I, I I was just reminded thank you Lord um, I want to thank the um, the sisters that helped last week with the Sunday school thank you sister Jen um, I think if everyone looks at her um, she she looks fine yeah, she escaped without any serious injuries. Um, for anyone that, that wants to help uh, uh, in, in, in the future, we've got two other sisters that side. We'll see how they get on, which I'm pretty sure will be fine. Um, but thank you again so, so, so much. Um, right. Now is the time when Satan will be taken and bound and put in the bottomless pit or the abyss as it is spoken of in um, the book of Revelation uh, where his influence will not have any effect on the tribulation saints who have lived through the seven years of the tribulation. Amen and amen. He will have absolutely no more effect on um, anything in, in this world. Anything. I'm not giving... Uh, our enemy any credit but at this very moment as we are sitting here um, unfortunately he is ruling and reigning everywhere absolutely everywhere and when I say everywhere we're going to get into the scripture to confirm what I'm going to say now when I say everywhere even in some churches he has infiltrated he has taken control and he is um subliminally preaching through the preacher and it's sad family it is absolutely it's horrifically sad that this is what the body of Christ and God's kingdom have come to but if you are sitting I love a but amen and not the but we're thinking of I love the but in the Bible when Jesus says but it means something good is coming and so I'm going to say but for those of us sitting here this morning that have absolutely dedicated our lives to Christ, we belong to Him. We are proud property of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I have been bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus. I belong to Him. So for those of us that have taken that step of faith and that's living that every single day, um, every hour, every minute, um, we family have got the Lord has birthed in us a beautiful vision and we're going to see what that vision is now amen amen and amen so we start off with um, 20 verse 1 the beautiful everlasting Bible says then I saw an angel coming down from heaven 
having the key to the bottomless pit and the great chain or a great chain in his hand. Now, family, if anyone approaches you with a chain and they have got a serious look on their face, they are there to do damage, amen, to you with that chain. And so we can, without reading further, just pan out a picture, a vision in our minds of what this angel is coming to do with that chain. <coughs> there is something or someone that he is going to bind. And, and we, um, you know, the, the many men that work with chains or have worked with chains, you'll know that some chains you just can't break. You can pick up tons, hundreds of tons. If I'm exaggerating now, just, just uh, shout. Thousands of tons. Yes? Some chains... Yes, yes. Okay, yes. Let's say yes. <laughs> so chains are almost impossible to break, family, here on earth that is made by human hands. Can you imagine a chain that has been fashioned by Father God on His throne and given to a powerful angel? Can you imagine that um, um, chain? It is it's something we can't. But just try. Okay. And so this is what we are, 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 are dealing with here. This angel, to, to, to be clear, not Jesus himself, but is a ministering spirit that Jesus has given authority to. Okay, For those who know the word of God, you'll know this to be accurate. Those who don't, I want to share this. Um, every angel in heaven, unlike us as humans, do not have their own will. They do exactly what Jesus wants them to do, exactly the way that Jesus wants them to do it. Amen? All the angels that thought they had their own will are in the bottomless pit right now. That's the fallen angels. Okay, just to, to, to pan that out. Um, this angel comes from heaven. We've seen that in the scripture. We can assume from this that Jesus has turned the keys to the bottomless pit over to this specific angel and has given him power and authority for this job. Okay. Now, family, if you are sitting here this morning and you haven't yet um, found out, been revealed to, received, claimed, whatever you want to call it, your calling here on earth. Okay. This is similar to what's happening here. Our callings, family, comes straight from the heart and the hand of our Father in heaven. Okay? And it is a mission that has been given to us to fulfill. Amen? We cannot add flesh to that mission or that calling because otherwise, let's put it in plain English terms, we are going to stuff it up. Amen? It's not going to result, the cake isn't going to rise, it's going to be flat. And so, this is what is happening here. The Lord is giving this angel a specific goal. This angel doesn't take the chain and the key and then start wandering around on earth and go on a hike. And No, he's there for one mission, family. This should ring true to our spirits in saying to us right now, my boy, my girl, you are here for one mission. That's it. One mission. Find out what it is, and not from Google or TikTok or YouTube or some clever guy that's got degrees on his. Find out from Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your King. Amen. Because He's the one that gives it to you. Yes. Amen? Okay, so the great chain or the big chain in this angel's hand shows the power God has given him over the devil for this task to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years has ended or were ended. A beautiful grammar there. Let's not concentrate on that. Um, so uh, he has been given the chain out of the hand of Father God. Keep that in mind as we go further. Verse 2. Are we there? Yep. Um, he laid hold of the dragon. Family. Now. <laughs> For us sitting here, there has been an altercations in our life, okay? When someone is angry, 
at you and they lay hands on you. Okay, you know that they are they're serious. Something's gonna happen, okay? They are going to feed you with information. Okay? Maybe information you didn't have prior to them laying hands on you. Amen. And now again, we're going to say that I have been in some horrific fights in my life where I I genuinely thought I was going to die that very moment. Okay. I picked the wrong person and and but thank the Lord God Almighty, it turned out fine, and I'm still here this morning. But those are human beings, family. Can you imagine an angel? That has been given power and authority from Jesus. This angel lays hands on you. You're done for. That's it. And so here, this is what we are dealing with here. He laid um, hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Have a look what John is doing here, family. He is giving us a full description of Satan so that we are not confused. Okay? He starts off and he says dragon. Okay? So, so we know that everywhere coming now in this time we are living in, anywhere there's going to be terminology of some sort of dragon, we know that, okay, this is what they are talking about. They're talking about their master who is Satan. He goes further and he says, so this dragon that is now, John is looking in the future, this dragon that's in the future uh, was also the serpent in the past. Okay? He started off as a tiny little snake, a serpent, and grew into a powerful dragon. Amen? Can we see, family, there's that saying of, I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but whatever thing you feed will grow the most yes. in your life. Yes. Amen? So here we can see that this world has fed this serpent so much it grew into a dragon. So much power and arrogance and, and, and malice and strife and hatred that it's being fed. And it just grew and grew and grew and got to this point. So he's stating that, yes, now it's this dragon, but it used to be the serpent of the old and then he clarifies it for us, who is the devil, Satan. Okay. So that there's no deception. We're going to get to that as well. And he bound him for a thousand years. Done and dusted. Can we see here, family? There was no fight. Nothing. He came down with the chains, took a hold of him, bound him. That's it. A thousand years gone. Amen? Okay. Lay hold. This includes not only Satan, but the demons as well. Uh, because for those who, who, who don't have the knowledge, this whole world is filled with demonic force at this very present moment, family. Everywhere. Okay? Um, their imprisonment will dramatically alter the world during the kingdom of Christ. Since their destructive influence in all areas of human thought... And life will be removed. Can you, family, start to imagine a world like that? Can you? Where you walk up to someone, whether you know them or not, and the first thought that you have is a beautiful one. Amen. Can you imagine? And not walking up to someone like this. Morning, how are you? But in your mind thinking, if I have a chance, I'm going to strangle you. <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and, and family, in a blink of an eye, for a thousand years, that's going to be gone. Every thought is going to be beautiful. Every word is going to be filled with peace and encouragement. Every action is going to be helpful. Amen? It is going to be filled with Shana Naish. Um, since their destructive influence in all areas of human thought and life will be removed. Dragon. We spoke about this now. Likening Satan to a dragon emphasizes his ferocity, power, and cruelty. Again, family started off as a serpent, a small snake. Okay? I, I come from an area where there's more snakes than grass. And I've seen... I've seen big snakes before, family. Okay? But still, you can handle them. You can, you can kill them. Get rid 
But when that snake turns into a fire-breathing dragon, that you, you can't. Stay, stay, stay away. Okay. Um, here we can see the devil spoken of as a dragon, which we read about in previous scriptures. I'm just bringing this in for a little bit of homework for uh, those of us who love to go home and search the scriptures. He was the one who deceived Eve in the garden. We just spoke about that now in Genesis 3, 2 Corinthians 11, and 1 Timothy 2. There's some homework for, for, for us that wants to go and have a look at that. The devil will not be here on earth to harass the Christians or believers until the millennial thousand years of reign of Jesus is over. Wow and wow. Amen. Family, you know, our minds are so confused and distorted at this present moment. We cannot imagine a life like that. Because even sitting in church today, some of us have already had bad thoughts. Some of us. Whether it's a man sitting here lusting after a woman, whether it's somebody thinking of harming someone else, even in churches, family, can you imagine running a church service in this time? Where there's no interference, nothing. Your thoughts are hooked completely on Jesus and Jesus alone. It's going to be magnificent. Um, a thousand years. This is the first of six references um, of, of the length of the millennial kingdom, uh, also as in verse 3 to 7. Also, just some, some homework for, for us there. Um, verse 3. So he grabbed the hold of him, he bound him now. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. Amen? Keep quiet. Shush. Stop talking. Yeah. Because he can do that very well. Yes. He did it through the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He did it through the, the old um, um, lawless kings in the past. He's doing it in the lawless kings now in the future. Okay? Just talk, 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 talk a good talk. If you vote for me, I will do this and this and this. The, the vote comes in, nothing is done. Very good talker. Amen. Um, and so he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Okay, so we look at this scripture and something jumps out there, family. Okay, why was he put away for a thousand years? It tells us here. Why? So that he will not do what? One thing. Deceive. Keep that in mind as we go further. Okay, the bottomless pit. All seven times that this appears in Revelation, it refers to the place where the fallen angels and the evil spirits are kept captive, waiting um, to be sent to the lake of fire, the final hell prepared for them as in Matthew 25 verse 41. There's some homework for, for us as well. Okay? Um, and then must be released for a little while. Satan will be released so God can make a permanent end of sin before establishing the new heaven and the new earth. All who survive the tribulation and enter the kingdom will be believers. However, despite that and the personal presence and role of the Lord Jesus Christ, many of their descendants will refuse still to believe in him. We're going to see that as we go further now. Satan will then gather those unbelievers for a final rebellion against God. It will be quickly um, uh, crushed, followed by the great white throne judgment, which we're going to get into next week, uh, and the, or this, this evening, and the establishment of the eternal kingdom. Can we see what is happening here, family? Um, now, interesting, beautiful. Have a look at this. This 1,000-year millennial reign of Jesus Christ here on earth, I believe, my humble unpublished opinion as a fisherman for, of, of Jesus, um, has to be 1,000 literal years. Okay? 
Let's, let's have a look what the scripture says. Mankind has worked six, one thousand years since Adam. And this will be the one thousand year rest, which is the Sabbath. Yes. Does that make sense? God set his universe up in six days yes. of work and rested one day. The land in, in, in uh, Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Deuteronomy, Numbers, the land was set to work six years and one year of rest. Jesus hung on the cross for six hours to complete his work. This will be a literal thousand years to um, rest, uh, of rest for comfort to those uh, who are drawn to Father God or conform, conform to uh, Father God. Does this make sense, family? Again, I'm going to say that this is, this is my humble view of this. If the Lord has shown you something else, hallelujah, praises be to Him. Amen. And, and, and so, um, why I took this as literal is, um, if we have been listening to evolutionists, um, this earth of ours is not 475 billion years old. It's not 42 million years. It's not. It's 6,000 years old. If you want confirmation and evidence of that, there is a timeline in the Bible. Just have a look there. From the book of Genesis to the book of Matthew is 4,000 years. From the book of Matthew to where we are standing today is 2,000. 4 times 2, 4 plus 2 is 6. Okay, 6,000 years. Which means if we are in the 6,000th year time period right now, the coming of Jesus is close, family. Yeah. If this, if I'm accurate here, okay, which I'm careful to say, Thus saith the Lord. I'm not going to say that. Okay? But let's, uh, let's ponder on this. Let's go into to the week and let's see what the Holy Spirit says to us about it. Okay? Um, verse 4. Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded, for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead or on their hand. And they lived and reigned with Christ for 1,000 years. Amen. For, for those people outside of the church that have got the viewpoint if there are going to be no believers on earth in the tribulation, this refutes that. This shows that there were believers that refused to take the mark of, of the beast. As I was going through this this week, family, a, a sad thing hit my... A sad thought hit my spirit. Okay? The past three years we witnessed this world go through something, and in this something... The, um, the world government wanted the population of the world to take something that they wanted them to take. Half of the population took it. No, in a blink of an eye. Yes, let's do this. It sounds good. Let's go for it. Boop. Didn't consult the Lord. Went for it. The other half of the population refused. Now, now, a lot of the people that refused said that that was the mark of the beast, which wasn't. Because nobody was forced to deny Christ. Okay? So, we can breathe there. Alright, but, here's the sad thing that hit my spirit, family. Is that not, the people that refused it weren't all Christians. Yes. There were worldly people that refused it as well. Now, that shows me, again, my humble opinion, that when the Antichrist arises and forces the mark, there's going to be non-believers that are going to say, I'm not going to take this. Okay? And they're going to die for nothing. Huh? How sad is that, family? At least we will die proclaiming that we belong to Jesus. They will die because they were just stubborn. I don't want to take this. No, because you're going to claim my money. Okay, well then, whoop, behead. That's it. We're going to take your life and you're going to die for nothing. You're going to end up in the pit of hell. Not proclaiming that you didn't take the mark of the beast for Christ. That is a sad reality, 
um, a, a family that, that could possibly manifest one day. Now, we see here Christ will rule on earth through three groups of kingdom stewards. Firstly, the Old Testament saints, as we see in Isaiah 26, Daniel 12, who will be resurrected at that time. Number two, the apostles and the church, as we see in Matthew 19. And number three, the tribulation saints, as we see in Luke 19. And so, family, this is what gets me excited, you know, like a jumping jack. There's a possibility, again, my humble opinion, that in these thousand years, you and I will walk next to Elisha and Elijah. Yeah? We'll, we'll hook in with Noah and, and Moses. Whoa, family, are you ready to stand next to men of God like that? When they say, hey, let's go and convert 5,000 people, you're going to say, oh, I couldn't even convert one in my family. Uh, but we must be ready, family. Amen. We're going to stand side to side, possibly, eh? possibly, with these great people, these great followers of Jesus Christ, King David. That, he's going to, that man's going to be ready for a fight, but there's going to be no fight. We're going to have to say to him, hey, uh, King David, calm down. Just breathe. Yeah? Amen. Yeah? The fight is coming after the thousand years. Amen. And so um, this is going to be glorious, family. Um, where was I? Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, we go to the next one. The thrones represented the administration or the callings of the messianic kingdom. Those whom John sees come to life are the tribulation martyrs who refused to worship the beast. We saw that in the scripture now. Um, and they will rule on earth with Christ for a thousand years. Together with uh, what we, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was in uh, Revelation 16, 17, 18, with all of those that come back with Jesus. So the souls of them that were beheaded, these again, I, I just put this in here for homework for us, are the tribulation saints, as in Revelation 6, 18, and 19, the Greek word or translation for beheaded became a general term of execution. Okay. So, 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 so that, 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 I'm sorry, that was their go-to uh, execution for the Greeks. Now, this mark, we've been through that. The tribulation saints will be executed for refusing the mark of the beast. Nothing else, family. Not because they robbed someone, not because they murdered anyone, because they refused what Satan wanted to give them. And Jesus said, no, this is something, family, that, that we as, as, a, as a parents are supposed to teach our children, and our children are supposed to learn it from us. When we as a, a parents say to our children, yes, it's yes, yes. that's it. Even outside of us being with our children, if we send them to a sleepover, the yes in my home is the yes over there. Okay? But when I as a parent to my children say no, it's a definite no. Even at the sleepover, when I'm not there. My daughter has many times said to, to Cherise, she tells her a story, and then Cherie says to, to Faith, so what did you do there? She said, Mom, the very first thing I did was, what, what would Jesus do and what would Dad say? <laughs> because why, family? I, I'm not patting myself on the back here. I'm careful to say this because I, I falter and fail as, as well. But as a, a husband and a dad, I have to do and say what Jesus does and says. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I am going to be judged on that one day. Mm -hmm. hey, so here we can... Uh, yeah, yeah, we can see that yes is yes and no is no. Jesus said, don't take the mark. That's it. And, and we're going to get into a scripture now to show why a lot of people will fail. Why? Okay. Um, in this uh, scripture above, we find that the, uh, the saints and those who refuse to take the mark of the beast will reign with Christ right here on earth. Christians or followers um, from all generations will live here on earth during that thousand uh, year reign and will rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
we will rule with Christ during those years, but we will be equal as He will be the ruler. We will be the subordinates. Does that make sense? So each one of us will be equal. There will be no levels, but Jesus will be the ruler and the king. That's it. No one on earth in those thousand years will rule the same as Jesus or above Jesus. It's just, it's not going to happen. Let's purge that out of our minds right now. Okay. We are going to be, he is going to give us tasks. We're going to go out and do the task. Again, that's just how my, my, my mind is, is thinking. Whatever the Lord does there, we're going to, to, to follow um, suit. Um, verse 5 but the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So let's see what the Lord says there. The rest of the dead, the bodies of unbelievers of all ages will not be resurrected until the great white throne, as we are going to see tonight um, in verse uh, 12 and verse 13. The first resurrection scripture teaches us two kinds of resurrections the resurrection of life and the resurrection of judgment as in john um, uh, 5 daniel 12 and acts 24 there's some some homework for us it speaks of those resurrections the first kind of resurrection is described as the resurrection of the righteous as in luke 14 the resurrection of those who are in Christ at his coming, as in 1 Corinthians, and the better resurrection, as in Hebrews chapter 1. Okay? So that all of that describes the first uh, resurrection. Then, the second kind of resurrection then will be the resurrection of the unconverted who will uh, receive their final bodies uh, suited to torment in hell. This is what this scripture that we just read of here speaks of. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Amen. Which means if we are sitting here this morning, um, born again, blood washed, Holy Spirit filled, um, sold out to Jesus, we are part of the first resurrection. Does that make sense, family? Yeah. Amen? Okay. So, as we saw in, in these scriptures now. So, blessed and holy is He. So, we are not just blessed, family. We are holy as well. Amen? We work our whole lives to become holy. You can't work to be blessed. The Lord blesses you when He chooses. But we work our whole lives to become, and in a blink of an eye, the Lord binds Satan and immediately those that are with him are holy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. With a tear in my left eye. Um, so it says here, uh, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection over such the second death has no power. It's got no power over us, family, if we are born again. Has no power, but they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Family, this is, especially today, this is a huge amount of information that is being fed us. Let's, let's just go through this and then go to Brother Brian. He will send us the, the uh, um, notes. We go home, we sit down quietly and carefully uh, with the Holy Spirit, with the Bible, and we go through it uh, uh, again. Amen? Amen. Um, blessed. Let's see what it says there. Those who die in the Lord, as in Revelation 14, are blessed with the privilege to enter into His kingdom. That's where we are blessed, family. We made the choice to say no to this world and yes to Jesus. And, and at this time, this is where our blessing comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. We as believers and followers of Christ are the blessed. You can easily see that the wicked dead have no part in this resurrection. We, believers in Christ, the redeemed or the saved, are not subject to death because we have life which Jesus breathed into us when we were born again 
by the Holy Spirit of Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay. Now my question to you this morning, family, if this statement is true in your life, sitting here right now, this very moment, do you feel alive? Amen. amen. We should. I didn't ask, do you have problems? That's a yes. I, I'm not asking, do you have enemies? That's a yes. I'm not asking, do you maybe have financial problems or, or struggles in your marriage or, 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 or challenges raising your children? All of those are yes. I'm, I'm asking you, family, do you feel alive? Because if we do feel alive, it means that this, that we have just read now, manifests in our life. We are born again, blood-washed, Holy Spirit-filled, Bible-believing, God-fearing, water-walking, faith-healing. We love the Word of God. That's who we are. Amen? Amen. That should be our names on our birth certificates. <laughs> <laughs> we will never die. Amen? Amen? This is something to look forward to, family. We will never die. The second death mentioned here is for the lost, the ungodly, those who rejected the Lord. Not only will the followers of Christ reign on this earth with Jesus for 1,000 years, but we will live for all eternity in heaven with Jesus because we have eaten of the tree of life, which is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. That's why we will live. The second death, the first death is only physical, the second is spiritual and eternal in the lake of fire, the final eternal hell as in Revelation chapter 14. Um, then we go to verse 7, now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison. Family, if you have ever harmed, hurt, or upset anyone that eventually went to prison, somewhere inside of us there's a fear that when that person comes out, they're going to look for revenge. Amen? It's going to be no different here. By you and me saying yes to Jesus, we are harming the devil. We are harming this great leader of the world. We are harming him. And because of us saying yes to Jesus, he was bound for a thousand years. And he's not going to a tickle fest family. He's being put in the pit of hell. It's not a, a party there. That, that is something that was designed for torture. And then he's going to be released for a little while. Now we know what a little while for Jesus is. Because 2,000 years ago he said to us, I will return soon. Amen. Now it's soon for Christ because he's not bound by time. But if we see here where it says that Satan will be released from prison. I'm pretty sure that um, <clears throat> some uh, translation says for a little while. He will be released for a little while. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. So Satan and his, and his demons will be imprisoned in the abyss for a thousand years while Christ rules with um, uh, unstoppable sovereignty. They are not permitted to interfere in the affairs of the kingdom in any way in that time. All those who initially went into the kingdom were without doubt redeemed sinners who had turned to Christ in faith. The bad news is that they still will possess a sinful nature. Does this make sense, family? Even walking on earth a thousand years with Jesus, once Satan is loosed, we will still have the ability in us to sin. We can see that in the Garden of Eden. They walked with Father God every evening. They still chose to sin. They still chose to sin, family. That is how ridiculous we as human beings are. We just can't learn. And so this will be the final um, push to see who really, really, really wants to belong 
to Jesus. Because can you imagine, family, some people, even some people in churches, can't resist sin for one day. They can't. Now, there is no sin for a thousand years. No pleasure of the flesh. Nothing. It's for a thousand years. And then in a blink of an eye, this world is covered with sin. Everywhere you look, there's just sin. Everywhere. Family, it's not going to be a, 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 a game that. That is going to be excessively difficult if you are not bound to Christ. If you are not part of the, the true vine. If you do, you're not filled with the bread of, of the word of God. That is going to be difficult, family. Excessively difficult. Um, when Satan is loose, he provides the leadership needed to bring the dormant sin and rebellion to the surface of those unrepentant hearts. This act of rebellion will start immediately when he is released. We go to verse 8. And will go out to deceive. So he's released now. He will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. Okay? Uh, uh, another um, uh, point that we made a, a while ago, that the earth is flat. Four corners of the earth. Just a joke, family. Just a joke. The book of Psalms says it is round. So, um, which are on the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle whose number is as the sand of the sea. Can we see here, family, how many people are going to be deceived? The number is like the sand of the sea. It's sad, family. It is really sad. That's why Jesus, in the word of God, said, Many have been called, but few have, have been chosen. Many have been called. Everybody has been called, but few have heard that call and responded to it. <clears throat> um, just a little bit of, of history. Gog and Magog, the name given... Is that where we are? No, we're not. Um, this battle is very similar to the battle we read about in chapter 19 of Revelation. We just went through that now. Armageddon. The only thing that makes this appear to be different <coughs> battle is that... Uh, the one in chapter 19 is in the valley of Megiddo. And this battle seems to be or is um, to be around the city of Jerusalem. We're going to get to that scripture now to confirm that. Okay. Gog and Magog. The name given to the army of rebels and its leader at the end of the millennial. Um, they were names of ancient enemies of the Lord. So let's go back in the Old Testament. Magog was the grandson of Noah, as in Genesis um, 10, and the founder of uh, the kingdom located to the north of the Black and the Caspian Sea. Okay? So that's where uh, Magog, uh, uh, yeah, Magog uh, comes in. Gog is said to be the leader of the rebel army known collectively as Magog. The battle uh, depicted in verse 8 and 9 is like the one in, in Ezekiel uh, 38 and 39. There's homework for, for us as well. It is best to see this one as taking place at the end of the millennial, um, not the tribulation. Again, you can grab the, the, the notes by Brother Brian. Go and sit and see what... The Spirit of God says to you during the week. Uh, verse 9. Are we there? Yes. They went up on the breadth of the earth and summoned the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And surrounded, not summoned, sorry. Surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. The fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So all this army did, it was as much as the sand of the sea, was marched to a specific place 
They didn't even have time to draw a sword. And the Lord said, this is it. I'm tired of this now. It's finished. Okay? And, and sent um, the, the, the fire of judgment. We go through the Word of God. We can see that fire in the Word of God um, normally or always represents uh, judgment. I'm jumping the gun here. But these enemies of God here uh, come against Jesus and the saints. In fact, they surrounded the saints. The beloved city here mentioned is Jerusalem, as we know. Um, when the devil thinks he has won, fire comes down from heaven and devours him. Exactly what we just said now. This fire, we just said that, free, excuse me, frequently associated in scripture with divine judgment of wicked men, as in Genesis 19, 2 Kings 1, Luke 9, and Luke 17. Okay. Again, like the battle of Armageddon before the millennial started, this battle too will in all reality be an ex execution. It, there's no doubt about that. An execution straight out. As the rebel forces move in to attack, they are swiftly and totally exterminated or eliminated. They will be um, physically killed and their souls will go into the realm of punishment awaiting final sentencing to the eternal hell that will shortly take place as we are going to see tonight. Verse 10, I'm pretty sure this is where we are ending this morning. Uh, verse 10, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the chocolate cake. Um, the devil who deceived them will cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet already are. And they will be tormented day and night forever. Yeah, we can see, family, this is not going to be a party. Torment, torment, torment. Amen. Someone asked me the question once, Hey, listen, Jacques, explain this to me. I can't explain a lot of things, but I, I sit and I listen to what the Lord said. Explain this to me. If, if Satan and, and the demons are the ones that are tormenting now, when they are at the end of time cast into hell to be tormented, who's going to do the torment? Okay? Family, Jesus Christ of Nazareth owns everything. Okay? Hell was designed by him four demons okay the torment is going to come from whoever the lord decides that's my answer amen i can't say this or that or they're going to torment each other or the lord's going to send an angel the torment will come from whoever the lord decides it will because he is the owner of everything um are we there deceived this is where we're going to end this morning family just as his demons will entice the world's armies into battle of Armageddon, Satan will draw them into a suicidal assault against Christ and those with him. This is after the thousand years. He still hasn't learned his lesson. The beast and the false prophet have been waiting for him, or Satan, in the lake of fire and brimstone um, for the thousand years. Now their deceiver joins them. Amen and amen. Sure. This is it. Sure. That is his end result, family. Okay. Torment day and night. Continuous. Um, torment will be the final state of Satan and his fallen angels and unredeemed men. There will not be a moment's peace for them for the rest of eternity. This is their lot, family. This is what they... They, they sowed and this is what they will reap. They sowed destruction into families. They sowed destruction into God's kingdom. And this is what they will reap. An eternity of torment. I want to end by saying this. I, I, I jumped the gun and I already asked this question. I want to ask this question before we go into the final scripture, family. 
How is it possible that after living with Jesus Christ for a thousand years, people will still fall away? How, family, is that possible? I have asked that question for 20 plus years serving in God's kingdom. How is it possible that people sitting in churches that read this book Sunday after Sunday, that lift their hands on high and worship, how is it possible that they still reject Christ when they get the opportunity? How, family? It all comes down to selfish, fleshly um, desires. That's it. It all comes down to what we want. That's why Jesus said, we must die to ourselves. We must crucify the flesh. Look what Jesus says. He doesn't say, come to me, I will crucify your flesh. No, he wants us to do it, family. That's it. He wants us to show our love so much to him that we will be willing to say, Lord, I don't want to be me anymore. I don't want to because I am, I am, am, am fully convinced that the Bible teaches me that Jacques Fouché will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But the new creation that Jesus has created in me, he will. Amen. Amen. All my sinful desires and, and all my stupid thoughts and, 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 and opinions and that, that will not enter into heaven, family. It can't. It is unholy. It can't. Only what is holy can enter into, into heaven. And so, this is a question that I had. And I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, please, Scripture, for, for this, please. And the Lord took me to Matthew 24. We're going to go through it together. One, two, three. Jesus le left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him and called his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things? He asked. Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Verse 3, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what, keep in mind family, will be the sign of your coming. Okay? So the disciples asked Jesus for a sign. Lord, if we are still living in these last days, can you tell us what the sign will be just before your coming? Now, family, each one of us should sit up straight and pay attention because the Bible is going to tell us now what we will witness just before the Lord returns. Amen? Okay, so... He's asking, Lord, what will be the sign of your coming at the end of ages? At this time that Brother John is speaking about here in the book of Revelation. Okay. We go to Matthew 24 from 6 to 8. You will hear of wars, a sign. Okay. And rumors of wars, a sign. But see to it that you're not alone because such things must ha happen. But the end is still to come. Nations, another sign, will rise against nations. Okay? So here the Lord gives us the signs. Wars, rumors of wars. Okay? Nation will rise up against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. Okay? And there will be famines and earthquakes. All signs, family. Okay? That the end of time is, is near. Now, wars and rumors of wars. Africa is riddled with war. Okay? There's a war in Europe right now. There's war in Asian countries. So that is a sign. Okay? Um, famine. Famine is everywhere right now. Africa is riddled with famine. Um, there's parts of, of China that are struck with, with famine. Okay? Um, earthquakes are everywhere. There are literally, family, you can go on, I, no, I don't like to say this, but you can go on Chichol and you can have a look there and you can see um, that, that there's thousands of earthquakes every month. Not hundreds, thousands of earthquakes. Maybe not earth shattering, but they're earthquakes. Okay, now, I've had this question a lot, family. Okay. When people come to me, they want to, they want to shun the truth of the word of God. Then, and maybe someone's thinking that right now, okay? But hey, listen, Jock, 
wars. There's been wars from, from, from the beginning of time. There's been wars. Okay, so how can we take this as a sign? Okay, all right. Um, nation will rise against nation. Uh, ba Babylon uh, uh, against uh, Judah. Uh, so, hey, Jacques, look, that's also been for thousands of years. How can we take that as a sign? And then famine. Hey, Jacques, if you go and read the Old Testament, the Old Testament is, is drenched with famine. Yeah? And, and there's earthquakes there. How can we take this as, you know, being the sign? Okay, watch this, family. Watch this. Jesus sits them down and he says to them, I'm going to give you the signs. And Jesus starts with one sign that we should pay attention to today, family. So we went from verse 1 to 3, we read from verse 6 to 8, and we missed verse 4 to 5, and this is what it says. Jesus answered, watch out, first sign, that no one deceives you. First sign that Jesus mentions, not the wars, not the rumors of wars, not the famine, not the earthquake. The first thing that Jesus says is, watch out that nobody deceives you. Why, Lord? Because we just read in Revelation now that Satan is a deceiver. And that's his job. And family, if there's ever been a time in history where deception is running rampant, it's now. Right now. There are new Bibles being printed by the day that is deceiving God's people. There are sermons that are being preached that are deceiving God's people. Is there anyone this morning that needs healing? If you need healing, run to the front and put a thousand dollars down. You will receive your healing in this week. Deception! Amen? Deception. They should grab a hold of preachers like that and cast them out of that church permanently and have nothing to do with them. Why? Because Jesus said, my house has become a place of robbers and thieves. You are yet to steal from my people. If a preacher family is not giving the word of God, the pure word of God he is taking from God's people. That's what he's doing. That's it. If he's giving opinion and he's telling people what TikTok and Chuchel says and, and all of this rubbish that's running around in the world, he is stealing from God's people. He is making a, a house of robbers and thieves. He's making the house of God a, a mockery. Amen. And here Jesus comes. And the first thing he says is, my boy, my girl, if Jesus says, Jesus, the son of God, watch out. Watch out. Why? And now I've closed this. <laughs> Let's see if I know where, where Matthew is. <laughs> hey. 24. Matthew 24. There we go. Jesus says, watch out. Okay. That no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming that I am the Messiah and will deceive many. It goes from there, which is verse 4 and 5 to, to verse 24. It says, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive even the elect. Even those who are standing and saying, hey, I'm good. I'm sorted, Lord. I'm stuck with you. The Lord is saying to us, don't get too comfortable to think you cannot be deceived. Don't think that, family. I'm pretty sure the Holy Spirit is, is highlighting areas of our lives right now where we were deceived, even in this past week. Even sitting here this morning, the enemy might have deceived you somewhere in your mind. Somewhere. Family, going into this new week, this is something that we have to pay attention to more than the wars and the rumors of wars. That's happening. More than the famine, that's happening. More than the earthquakes, that is happening, family. We have to pay attention to deception. Deception. Anybody that does not proclaim the word of God, I am bold enough to say they are out to deceive us. If any government on earth, and I'm going 
going to have to edit this now again. If any government on earth does not proclaim the word of God as truth, they are deceiving you in everything they say. Everything. If it is not based on the word of God, they are deceiving us, family. We must open our eyes and come alive and know that this is a, this deception is a pandemic. And here we need a vaccine. Amen. 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 We need this pill, the gospel. Amen. We need to drink this pill every day. We need to live on this every single day. If we don't, family, we are going to deceive, be deceived. We are going to be deceived day and night, day and night. You switch um, 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 social media on. The first thing that you see is deception. First thing, anything. Challenge me in this, if you want, family. Bring me any video on YouTube or TikTok, any video that you want, outside of, of, of preaching, and I'll show you the deception in that video. It's everywhere, family. It is so scary. Deception has infiltrated every single part of our, our life, every fiber that is around us, everywhere. And so we must pay attention so that we are ready for it. Amen and amen. amen.